Hey everybody, it's M from Fret Planet. So check it out. People keep sending me these videos of uh, the latest and greatest young uh, guitar child prodigy. His name is Taj Ferrant. Now I have yet to watch his video, but uh, I'm going to watch it with you today. Um, I'm curious to see what this little rocker is doing because um, I have been a guitar teacher for a long time, over a decade, as well as a professional musician for almost two decades. And uh, I've taught many, many, many kids his age in my experience as a teacher. So I'm curious to see what's up. Um, I know he was on the Ellen Show recently, and he's super famous right now. Um, I'm going to watch what he's doing on the Ellen Show performance, and uh, let's take a look. Taj Ferrant. Well, he's got a Gibson SG. I mean, that's... That's my heart right there, you know. So, interesting choice. The uh, solo from Sweet Child of Mine, of course. What all of my students want to learn. So he handled that really fast part of the uh, solo before it gets super, super intense and kind of takes it to the next level. That was pretty good. He's also doing this characteristic thing that a lot of uh, especially young bluesy type of lead guitar players do. He's doing this little like they leave in these little muted strum type things before they hit like a bendy riff. So there's a little bit of scratch and then a little bit of bend. I don't know if you guys can hear what I'm talking about, but it's definitely in there. Um, so let's see where this goes next. Using the higher frets, thank you. Thank you for not being afraid of the higher frets. get to the little minor part of the solo here let's uh, uh, observe a couple things he's got that wah-wah pedal on lock okay that's something that here's here's my thought on on people and their giant pedal board experience a lot of especially younger newer players they get a ton of pedals because they think that that's what's going to make them sound good or sound professional, or they're just gear nuts, right? And then what happens is you see him use them on stage the first couple of times, and I don't know if it's his first couple of times or not, but um, you see him use these on stage, and, and the problem is if you don't know how to hook up the pedals in the right order, if you don't know how to hook a proper, a proper power source to all of them, um, and if you don't know how to kind of troubleshoot when things go wrong, the pedal experience can, can, you know, be disappointing because you might get to the point where you click a pedal and then nothing happens and then you don't know what to do. And then you're standing out there on stage and it's very awkward. You might also get to the point with things like wah-wah pedals where you can't quite coordinate the pedal with making your playing more expressive. You just start waving it back and forth thinking it's going to do something, and, and it doesn't really serve the proper function. It's supposed to enhance your tone. It's supposed to add um, expressiveness to your tone, but you kind of have to time it right, and it's not easy. So this kid has definitely spent some time with his pedal board and spent some time with uh, his wah-wah pedal, certainly. Um, let's see what's next. Okay, okay. 
Okay, so, all right. So, the the best thing that I've seen so far in this solo is, is happening right now. So, he's deviating away from playing the note-for-note -note transcribed official tabbed out solo. He's actually doing some of his own improvisation here, which I think is perfect. That That's something that I didn't expect. I'm going to talk about that a little bit afterwards. All right. just because he kind of made it his own thing. And that's something that I don't see very often with um, the child prodigy types. I mean, like I said, the fact that he added his own licks in there is unusual. Here's what I worry about with child prodigies, okay? Because people send me this stuff all the time. Um, what I worry is that the way that they're learning is that they're just learning note-for-note -note tabs. They're just learning songs and famous riffs. But the problem with that is that is only part of the experience of what makes a great guitar player a great guitar player. What you really need to learn, in addition to songs, um, is you need to learn the elements that make up great songs, great riffs, and great solos. For example, it seems like young Taj Ferrant is learning things like his pentatonic scales. Okay, that's how he got to write his own improv in, in that one little section of the solo. Um, it seems like he's working on things like bends and hammer-ons and pull-offs and how to use the wah-wah pedal properly and little things like that. I mean, you know, the thing is, Slash doesn't sound like Slash because he imitated note for note other people's already written songs and solos. I'm certain that that was a big part of it, but Slash sounds like Slash as opposed to Jimmy Page or Jimi Hendrix or somebody else because he developed his own style through learning things like scales, arpeggios, what, how to stay uh, in the right key when you're soloing, what scales and arpeggios to use over what chords and things like that. Um, he learned physical drills like the hammer-ons and the pull-offs and, and things like that. I mean, um, and he learned how to follow a chord progression and how to play rhythmically and, and how to make things interesting and create good phrasing and things like that. That's what allows a person to develop their own personal style and become themselves. Now, it seems like young Taj is on his way to doing that if he keeps up practicing his... his uh, essentials, his fundamentals, scales, arpeggios, you know, all of those types of things. Um, so I don't know if he's got a really good teacher showing him that or if he's learning it from YouTube tutorials or whatever, but keep it up. So if he keeps going on that path in addition to learning the songs um, that he loves, he's definitely going to craft his own style and that's what's really going to make him uh, you know, the next most valuable player, if you will, okay? Because we don't, you know, I mean, he could play cover tunes his whole life and be the world's greatest cover guitarist, and that's legit. I mean, you can make a lucrative career out of that. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to be the next Slash, if you want to create your own sound and you want to be an individual, it takes a little more patience. It takes more practicing techniques. Um, it takes a little bit of, you know, learning you know, a little bit of basic music theory. Now, that's not to say that you have to learn it in a formal setting or you have to be an expert or you have to be a classical musician, but you do need to be able to do things like follow a chord progression and know what it means to stay in a certain key or something like that. Um, so keep up the good work, little man. I mean, I, I, I'm very impressed as a guitar teacher. I'm very impressed as a musician. Uh, just stay on that right path, okay? Thanks a lot for watching today, you guys. And uh, if you've got any more videos you want to send me to uh, see my reaction and my critiques and my thoughts, please, please send them to me. As well as you can take lessons from me, uh, you want to follow the link that I'm going to put in the video description. And I'm going to put a link in the comments below as well to where you can sign directly up for guitar lessons with me. Uh, you can also visit my website, fretplanet.net. 
and there is a direct link to book lessons on there as well. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on um, Facebook, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more stuff like this, and I thank you very much. Have a good one.